the Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Jesus took with him Peter and John and James and went up on the mountain to pray. And while he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became dazzling white. Suddenly they saw two men, Moses and Elijah, talking to him. They appeared in glory and were speaking of his departure, which he was about to accomplish at Jerusalem. Now Peter and his companions were weighed down with sleep, but since they had stayed awake, they saw his glory and the two men who stood with him. Just as they were leaving, Peter said to Jesus, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah, not knowing what he said. <coughs> While he was saying this, a cloud came and overshadowed them, and they were terrified as they entered the cloud. Then from the cloud came a voice that said, This is my son, my chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, Jesus was found alone, and they kept silent, and in those days told no one any of the things they had seen. From the next day, when they had come down from the mountain, a great crowd met them. Just then a man from the crowd shouted, Teacher, I beg you to look at my son. He is my only child. Suddenly a spirit seizes him, and all at once he shrieks. It convulses him until he foams at the mouth. It mauls him and will scarcely leave him. I begged your disciples to cast it out, but they could not. Jesus answered, You faithless and perverse generation, how much longer must I be with you and bear with you? Bring your son here. While he was coming, the demon dashed him to the ground in convulsions. But Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit, healed the boy, and gave him back to his father. And all were astonished at the greatness of God. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Brothers and sisters, we have reached the mountaintop. Uh, we are here, and today is the day that every Sunday before we get into the season of Lent, we celebrate the Feast of the Transfiguration, and we celebrate the moment when Jesus is up uh, on the mountaintop. Uh, and it's, it's the transfiguration before the crucifixion. It is the Mardi Gras party before Lent. And so we are here at this celebratory moment. And it is in this moment that we see God fully. That we see God fully. The disciples have been following Jesus around. They've been seeing the miracles. They've been hearing his teaching but they've yet to have really that mountaintop experience and to know fully without a doubt this sign, this glory that has been revealed to them. They're up there on the mountain. Jesus' face shines as Moses did when he was in the presence of God. Uh, Jesus' clothes are dazzling white and there appear with him Elijah and Moses, the law and the prophets. And it's in this moment that they see him floating there above the mountaintop, and they think to themselves, God is real, Jesus is real, the Messiah is here, we have a sign. And how many times I know in my life that I have wished for some kind of moment like that where I could just see God fully. God, you are real. God, I praise you. Thank you for this moment, this mountaintop experience, this vision. Thank you for being real. And they get to have this wonderful moment. And who can blame Peter that most human of disciples, 
who can blame him in that moment for wanting to stay there and say, hey, this is awesome. This is a great experience. Can we make some dwelling places, Lord, and we'll stay here and worship you and we'll stay here and enjoy this wonderful moment. And it's right then that Jesus shows them we can't stay here. All of this is happening so that you can follow me to Jerusalem and to the cross so that you can follow me. My brothers and sisters, we are given mountaintop experiences in our lives, experiences of the divine, experiences of awe, uh, experiences of glory, so that we will be strengthened and have the courage that we need to go out into the world and follow Jesus to the cross. I wish it were true uh, that Jesus did everything for us so that we don't have to worry about it, but we are called to follow and take up our own cross. And so we have these mountaintop experiences, these moments of glory, uh, so that we can continue and be strengthened. I saw a study that was recently linking the experience of awe, the experience of feeling that there is something more going on in your life, more meaningful, uh, and just taking in that beauty and that awe. There's something that links that experience to our ability to be resilient, to our ability to be resilient and to take to take the things that come in life and the disappointments and the depression and the anxiety and all the fears. If we can experience awe, it gives us the gift that we need to endure. And it's here at this mountaintop that we see that happening with the disciples. And we know that as they get closer and closer to the cross with Jesus, they become more and more afraid. And it's not until after Jesus uh, returns at Easter that they finally find the awe and the experience that they need to be ready uh, to carry out their discipleship, their apostleship, all the way uh, to their martyrdom. And so it is in following Jesus that we will experience these moments, these wonderful moments of glory revealed, but it is also that we are still called to live in this world, to do ministry in this world that is so uh, very messed up. Uh, and I know if you've been following the news this week, it's been a cross to bear this week, the news. As we keep encountering historical events that only seem to occur once in a century, right? We keep going through uh, pandemics, moments of turmoil in our culture, and then the world stage shifting. In all of this time, we need to have these mountaintop experiences where we are given the strength and the courage that we need to follow Jesus in our time. In our time. We've been talking about the Holy Eucharist, and we have, uh, we've talked about how the Eucharist itself is a way for us to lift ourselves up into the presence of God. And we begin by hearing God's Word and how Jesus, the Word was fulfilled in Jesus. And now we arrive today at communion. And of course, we do this every week here in the Episcopal Church. We share the bread and wine. Uh, we lift up our hearts to the Lord and at His table we make the communion, the bread and the wine, somehow, mysteriously become the fullness of God's presence among us. And I want you to hear that, that just as Jesus was fully present on the mountaintop to his disciples today and each and every Sunday, he is fully present to us in the bread and in the wine. And if you're Episcopalian, then you know we don't spend a lot of time trying to explain how that happens, uh, when exactly Jesus uh, is there and present with us. Uh, we, don't, we have folks that believe in transubstantiation all the way on one side and then maybe just believe we're telling just a story on the other side. We have a spectrum of belief about what happens, but we do believe that somehow Jesus is present with us and most fully present with us in the bread and in the wine. And so each and every week we are given what is like a mountaintop experience. We ascend to God's table and we feast at God's table, and we are given the presence of God. But it's not enough to just stay here and do this just every Sunday, and this to be the extent of our uh, religious practice. We are sent out into this world through those very doors and into that very parking lot and in and out to the community to be disciples in our time. We are given this experience so that we will be brave enough to actually be courageously disciples of our Lord. And so as we're here and we're going to celebrate Mardi Gras and we had an awesome Mardi Gras party last night, 
all of this stuff that we do, the joy that we encounter and the things that we do to lift ourselves up is so that as we come into Lent and we're reminded of our mortality and we're reminded of our need to follow Jesus, we would be courageous enough to be God's people in a messy world. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us stand and reaffirm our faith in the